We're continuing our Summer at Hope City series, and I, I had this epiphany last week. July's a special month for us, because last Sunday, my wife and I celebrated 18 years of marriage. Let's go. 18 years of marriage, and July's a special month for us, but sometimes we just kind of breeze through June, but the truth is, we are just past the halfway point of 2022. To some of you, you're like, good riddance. Because maybe this year hasn't started exactly like you wanted. Maybe you hit June and you were at the middle and now you're in July and you're like, okay, we're on our way towards December. And we can just start a new year. And maybe this has been a banner year. Whichever way the pendulum swings, the truth is we find ourselves in the middle. They say statistically around this time, people start contemplating if they're gonna just say the year's a wash, statistically throw in the towel, or muster up some strength to finish strong. Now I can tell you as a pastor of Hope City Church, we're gonna muster up strength to finish strong. We're gonna reach more people. We're gonna take more territory. We're gonna see more people saved. Come on, somebody. We're gonna finish the year strong, but being in or even stuck in the middle isn't pretty. And honestly, it can be pretty messy. It can also be extremely defining and refining for where God wants to take you. Having faith to start something is not that hard. Even faith to finish sometimes isn't that hard. The real challenge in our humanity is having faith in the middle. Statistically, in the middle is where most people lose the battle. But here's the truth. God never promised that we would reach our destiny without opposition, that we would never fulfill our assignments without disappointments, without things happening in our lives that we just don't understand. Like right now, $9 a gallon is a little hard to understand. I know that's exaggerated unless you live in the West Coast. Amen. No, but there's things in our lives that we just don't understand. And this is what the, script, the scripture says in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Now, Peter starts off pretty good by saying, dear friends. We're like, thanks, Peter. Don't be surprised or shocked that you're going to go through testing that is like walking through fire. Thanks, Pete. Everybody say, thanks, Pete. Come on. But here's the truth. When I read this verse, here's what I hear. God is still on the throne. Nothing that's happened to you has stopped the plan of God on your life. He's not in heaven scratching his head like, ooh, on myself. Uh, Gabriel, I didn't see this one coming. Sheila got a really bad break. None of this catches God off guard. What he has promised, he still has every intention of bringing it to pass. And again, I know we can have the faith to start. Man, that's bold. We can even have faith to end. My question for us this weekend, if you're taking down notes, ask yourself this question, do I have faith in the middle? So we all find ourselves in the middle. Right now as a church, we're in the middle. Individuals, there's some moments where we're in the middle. Let's pray and we're gonna keep diving in. God, I thank you that you give us ears to hear you. I pray, God, today that we would leave encouraged I pray, God, that we would leave fired up with boldness. I pray, God, that you would give us a mind to understand. But most importantly, we need a heart ready to receive all that you have for us today. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. We find ourselves stuck in the middle of two realities, the now and the not yet. And here's the key. When God gives you a promise, a lot of times, again, we have the courage to start. He might even give you a glimpse of the end, but more times than not, he doesn't show you all the details in the middle. I know for me personally, if he ever gave me all the details in life, if he told me everything that he had promised in a moment, the truth is I would probably have talked myself out of it or I would have ran the opposite direction. When God gave Jonah a glimpse of what he needed to do by going to Nineveh, he said, I don't think so, Lord. And he ran the opposite way. The truth is I met my wife 22 years ago. And we became friends after a worship night. And uh, I was actually leaving to go play basketball in another country. And she was coming in to be a pre-med student. Some of y'all are looking at me like, hey, watch it. I'll still cross you up. I'll step back. And... But we end up meeting each other at a real fancy establishment that we like to call Cheddar's. Amen. It's very fancy. They have delicious ranch. If ranch is wrong, I don't want to be right. I love Cheddar's Ranch. We haven't been there for quite a few years, but if God would have showed me everything in that moment, 
If he would have just put a light on her and said, she is the one, Daniel. Now for all you seasoned saints and you real, real hyper Christians, maybe God did that. Maybe God showed up and gave you like an entire plan. You're like, I knew I would have a son named Hezekiah. You're amazing. I want to meet you. You're a prophet. That's incredible. For me, that's not the way it was. I lined out my beard. I had two diamond earrings. And I was like, what's up, girl? Like God didn't give me all the prophetic insight that I needed for what was next. If he would have said, hey, I've called you to be a leader, an influencer from neighborhoods to nations. You're going to be a husband. You're going to be a dad of not one, not two, three, but four children. You're going to have to figure out how to pay for two weddings in the future. <laughs> Stock up on ammo and guns to keep weird too tan, too much Axe deodorant spray boys away from your daughters. If he'd have told me all that at Cheddar's, I would have said, nice to meet you, Jackie. I'm out. I'm not going to. No, but a lot of times God will give you a glimpse. He will even give you the faith to start. But in most of my situations, I didn't really have all the clarity and details in the middle. Because if we had every single detail locked in place, faith would not be required. And we are to live by faith. This life is a walk of faith. It's not easy, but we're all given the same measure of faith. Some it starts as this mustard seed for all of us, just this measure. But thank God that through relationship with a Savior who loves you and likes you, you can grow your faith in the middle. I love the story of Gideon. If you're a student of the Bible, you probably know about Gideon, but I'm going to give you a little snapshot. Gideon was a military leader, a judge, a prophet whose calling and victory over the Midianites were recorded and recounted in Judges chapter 6 and 8, where he led a troop of just 300 men. Now, it started out way bigger. He started out with 32,000, like he was ready to go. Like, let's take on the Midianites. They outnumber us, 120,000, but I got 32,000 with me. Let's go. But through the process, God led him to take on the Midianites with just 300 men. 300 men, he found himself with the faith to start with 32,000, maybe even a little glimpse of faith at the end to defeat the enemy but he found himself in the middle pretty depleted. The truth is, that's where faith kicks in. When our abilities stop, faith kicks in and goes further. They, there was no mistake. When you read this story in Judges 6, the victory was only possible because of God's doing. When you read this story, you can see that only God could have carried out this supernatural plan where he breathed on this earth with 300 men following the lead of Gideon to defeat 120,000 Midianites. So let's back up even further about Gideon's life. Gideon was a young man, young boy actually, when God called him and told him that he would have to take on this enormous task. Now Gideon immediately kind of postured himself in the humanity perspective, which is what we would do, where he didn't understand what God was trying to tell him because he was looking at his qualifications and what he was disqualified in. But here's the truth. When God calls you, he qualifies you. He doesn't qualify the called. He calls the qualified. So Gideon is looking at this saying, hey, I haven't done enough deeds. I haven't done enough things. And God's saying, hey, it's not about the quality of the deeds you've done. It's about the quality of your heart. He's looking for willing hearts. If he was looking for perfection and perfect people, this room would be empty. All of our campuses would be empty. So let me invite you to Hope City, a church where you don't have to be perfect. You can show up blemished and fragile and wounded, but here's what I know. When Jesus gets in the way of your storm, everything changes. You will walk out better. You will walk out healed. You'll walk out sti with stitches where you've been putting Band-Aids. So Gideon's saying, you sure, Lord, you want to use me? So Judges 6, again, I encourage you to go back, be a student of the Bible, reread out, re -read this story. But Israel, I'll give you another snapshot, was in trouble God approaches Gideon declaring him, I love this, a declarative statement, you are a mighty warrior, calling him to save his people from the Midianites. Instantly, you see this, this caveat of frustration. You see this tug of war between Gideon and the voice of God, much like we probably do in our humanity. Gideon complained about the assignment and the call. He instantly started complaining. I'll show you. Judges chapter 6, verse 12 through 16. 
Starts off really good. The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon. He said, the Lord is with you. Man, that's good. Mighty warrior. Come on, that sounds like a t-shirt. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Like, it's such a declarative moment. And then Gideon immediately falls in the trap of humanity and says, pardon me, my Lord. Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all of this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about? Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us to the hand of the Midians. Verse 14 says, the Lord turned to him and said, go, this is another declarative moment, go in the strength you have and save Israel from Midian's hand. It's amazing when the answer then asks you a question. I love how God, all powerful, the creator of the universe, came down to Gideon's level and says, and asks him this, am I not the one who is sending you? Am I not the one who is sending you? But then verse 15, it shifts back to Gideon. He says, pardon me, my Lord. (laughs) And Gideon said, how can I save Israel? Watch, he made it about himself. My clan's the weakest in Manasseh. I'm the least in my family. Just so many excuses. But then watch how it shifts back to the Lord. The Lord answered, I will be with you. I feel like somebody needs to grab a hold of that today. When God calls you to something, when he unlocks a dream or an assignment, we have to be stronger than our strongest excuse. Why? Because we know that God is with us. Look at the person next to you and say, God is with me. Come on, let him know. Say, God is with me. But Gideon was wrestling with his faith in the middle. 32,000 with him dwindled down to 300, ready to take on, being called a mighty warrior He's wrestling with his faith in the middle, and he even had questions similar to what maybe we would deal with or maybe we would wonder, and he said, if the Lord is really with us, then why is all of this happening to us? I know some of us, as we look at inflation and the threat of recession and the way prices are happening and all the stuff around us, we can have those type of questions. Why is all of this happening to us? But I love how he postured position himself under the mighty hand of God, because even though he felt God had abandoned him, it says that he cried out for mercy and favor. Gideon's appeal, we can all learn from this. Gideon's appeal for grace was answered abundantly, and ultimately he fulfilled his mission while being led by the Lord. That's one thing that we're going to be as a church, y'all. And when I say the church, I don't mean the four walls. I'm talking about us individually. As a church, we're gonna rise up with audacious faith and say, we, tr- we choose to be led by you, Lord. Come on, do y'all believe that today? We're gonna continue to choose to be led by the Lord, not what we see with our eyes, not by the wind and the waves, not the things that are trying to be heavy on us, but we're choosing to replace Isaiah 61. We're gonna replace heaviness and burdens with a garment of praise. Or we're gonna continue to choose to be led by the Lord. Somebody say amen, come on. So when we get out of the way, and we ask God to fulfill his plan in our lives. This is what happens. Proverbs 16, 9 in the Amplified says, a man's mind plans his way as he journeys through life. But then it goes on and says, but the Lord, I love this, directs his steps and establishes them. See, when you allow the Lord to direct your steps, when you allow the Lord to truly direct where you're going, he also gives you the help of the helper. John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit is like built-in supernatural GPS. And the truth about GPS, Waze or Google Maps or some of you old school saints, you print off MapQuest. Like, did you print off the map? Did you print it off? Like, lay it on the hood of your car. You're like, there's actually no road here. Do y'all remember that when we have to print off MapQuest? Come on, I'm not the only one. Okay, thank God. Gee, many Christmas. Some of y'all were like, not me. I don't want to admit that. I don't want my kids to know that. But we have this supernatural built-in GPS from the Lord where we're keeping our eyes on the destination, but there are always things that happen in the middle. Traffic, Houston. Construction, Houston. Road closures, the list goes on and on. So we keep our eyes on the map knowing that we're ultimately gonna get to our destination as long as we follow 
the GPS or the ways, as long as we keep our eye on it, even when there is some reroutes a few times, we know we're ultimately gonna get to where we're going. A little while back, uh, I had worship music on, y'all, I was fired up, and I was driving, and my wife, who, I don't know if you have a wife like this, but I feel like she, the Holy Spirit just speaks to her first. Um, I have to fast and pray for days, and she's like, I got it in the first 20 minutes. I'm like, what is happening? So she was like, babe, don't go that route. Uh, if there's ever an accident on West Park Tollway, you're gonna get stuck stuck. So I'm gonna go this other way, don't go that way. And I was like, woman, let me lead the home. You know what I mean? Let me, it's time for me to lead. I'm gonna go, so I got in my truck, y'all, I've got worship on, I'm driving, and, and it keeps trying to reroute me because it's red, there's a whole block of red, and I'm like, I rebuke the red off the map, God, I'm gonna keep on moving forward, and then I ended up, this is what happened, I ended up stuck right here um, for uh, 90 minutes, 90, it was a parking lot, people got out, they were having like lunch, people were talking to people like, hey, what are you doing, wanna play cards? Like we were out, the fire truck couldn't even get to the wreck, and I was stuck there, and she kept calling me saying, where are you? because I'm tracking you and you look like you're sitting still. I'm like, you need to just, <sighs> where are you at? She's like, I'm in the meeting. I made it. I've been sitting here. Everything is good. I had a coffee for you. The ice is melted. I'm like, okay. See, the start is often fun and even the end can be exciting, but the middle can, can be messy. <laughs> we're all on a journey. There's things that we're believing for. You know, God plants the seed, but over time it gets discouraging and you start getting discouraged and think it's never going to happen. There's just way too many obstacles. But I believe that there's somebody in this room or watching today online at one of our locations. I believe that God wants you to hear this today, that he wants to breathe new life into your dreams that what he's promised is already on its way, that the process has already been started, that the healing, the right relationships, that business, that dream, that breakthrough is already on its way. Come on, look at the person next to you and say, because God is with me, I know his promise is on the way. Come on. We're gonna grow in the middle and we're gonna trust that he's directing our steps. But here's the truth, we have to remain sensitive because there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of things happening. There's a lot of negativity. Some of y'all, if you'll just go to your Apple and you'll just check out your screen time, you'll see how many hours you're spending on unnecessary stuff. You want to hear the voice of God, you have to get closer to his heart. You want to know as he's planning and leading your steps, and he has to reroute you around some situations. We have to have faith in the middle. Gideon, again, had no idea that God, God himself was going to dwindle 32,000 men that were following him down to 300 to take on the 120,000 Midianites. No, he had to have faith in the middle. David had to have faith in the middle because God had promised him that he would be king but did not tell him, just kind of left this detail out, that he would have to take on a giant twice his size. How many of y'all have ever had to fight something or face something in faith and you're like, God, couldn't you have warned me about this? No, David and Gideon both had to have faith. While Saul was chasing David through the desert to try to kill him, he didn't know the details, but he trusted God in the middle. When you study the great heroes of faith, one common denominator that you'll find in all of their lives is they had to have faith in the middle. When it looked impossible, when the promise seemed a long way off, they had to keep moving, recognizing it was a part of the process in the plan. And here's the truth, y'all. The fight of faith is a fight. <laughs> We've heard it. First Timothy chapter six talks about fighting the good fight of faith. Sometimes that walk of faith is a fight. How many of y'all have experienced that? That sometimes walking in faith is a fight. But the truth is you don't have to fight it on your own. The truth is we can choose to trust the one who says, hey, I'm fighting for you. Grow in the middle. Don't let this time be a wasted time. Let me be near to your heart. Let me download some tools in your arsenal, some weapons in your arsenal. Let me download some things that you're going to need later on for the assignment that I've called you to. The Bible says in Exodus 14, 14, the Lord himself. Come on, say the Lord himself. It says that he'll fight for you. What's it say? Just stay Woo. Look at the person next to you and say, calm down. Come on, let them know. Say, you need to calm. Look at your second choice and say, you need to calm down. Come on, said you just need to calm down. 
See, when you have faith in the middle, you're aware that God will make things happen that you can't ever make happen. And if you'll allow God to really steer your life, I'm telling you, he'll be all the way up in the middle of all of it. So many times we get distracted by what's in front of us or we're drawn back to what's behind us that we miss the very presence of the living God in the middle of it with us. Y'all, he's the God of the I am, not the God of just the I was. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not the God of I hope he will be. No, he's the God of the I'm right now in the middle of it with you, in the middle of the marriage, in the middle of that financial disaster, in the middle of that addiction, in the middle of that family dynamic, in the middle of that diagnosis. He's the God of miracles that will meet you in the middle. I feel like somebody should shout. I feel fired up. Probably because we have premium air conditioning. I feel it. Amen. <laughs> Again, he's not just the God of the start because we can muster up that strength to start that audacious faith to be like, I got a drink. I'm going to go on shark tank. Yeah. <laughs> About halfway through, you're like, I don't know what happened. Couldn't get anybody to like it. I've given up on it. Now we can even have faith to gain a little strength to finish strong. But again, my challenge for you this weekend, when the odds are stacked against you, when the situation seems impossible, when opposition feels so much stronger, will you have faith in the middle? Because this is a promise from God to us as his kids. Isaiah chapter 43, verse two, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not burn up. The flames will not consume you because God is with you in the middle. If you're taking down notes, the season in the middle should produce some things in our lives. Number one, I want you to write this down. The middle season should produce gratitude in your life. Everybody put a big smile on. Come on. Again, that joy of the Lord, Nehemiah 810. It's not your joy. It's the joy from God to you and through you. This middle season that you're in should produce sincere gratitude because I'm grateful that he's never ran out on me. I'm grateful that his goodness and mercy never stopped chasing me. I'm grateful that I woke up again today and I took another breath. Even if I'm in the middle, I choose to worship him because I'm grateful. The season of the middle should produce gratitude in your life because I don't know about you, but he's brought me so far. Wave at me if you know he's brought you so far. And he didn't just bring you this far to bring you this far. No, he's a God of more than enough. A God of abundance. A God of blessing. A God of supernatural sustaining power. He is the God that won't just leave you and say, ah, I got to tend to others. He's a personal God. Not just the creator of the universe that said stars here and moon here and water stop here. Yes, he's all of those things, but all throughout the Bible, it also says that he's a personal God, that he's near to the brokenhearted, that he's close to us. I've said this many times before. There's a reason why our windshield is bigger than our rear view mirror. God is far more interested in our future than our past. And I don't know about you, but I can shout from the rooftops that Jesus is the only reason I've made it this far. I'm still standing and I'm still breathing, and my family still has hope, and we have a purpose because Jesus has brought me this far. Some of y'all woke up again today. You should pinch yourself and say, I'm still here. Come on. I've said this often, but I need to say it as a position of repetition that there's mercy for every mistake. Maybe you came in duct tape back together. Maybe you came in because somebody convinced you that they would buy you lunch if you would just show up. There's mercy for every mistake. You didn't know they were taking you to Taco Bell. That's not. <laughs> There's enough grace for every goof up. 100%. You've survived 100% of your worst days because Jesus never gave up on you. Look at the person next to you and say, I'm not who I used to be. Come on, I'm not who I used to be. I think so many times the enemy or your critics People try to put you back to where you used to be. When we first moved to Texas, we got here as fast as we could. Uh, when we first moved to Texas, I forwarded, like you do when you move, I forwarded all of our mail. And, and so uh, the owner of the house that we were in before, he, he calls me one day and he says, hey, 
man, I'm getting harassed. We're literally getting harassed. We're getting a, a bill every week from a medical clinic here for you. And I said, what are you talking about? I forwarded all my mail. He said, not this one. I mean, they are, it's, it's second notice, and then it's third notice, and then it's, it's red now. I said, why didn't you send it to me? He said, well, I didn't know. I said, what? We're down to the third and the fourth notice? Like, I'm thinking this is thousands of dollars, and I, we hadn't really done a lot of medical stuff other than like a, my daughter cut herself. We had to get like a tetanus shot or something. And so I'm like, I can't even imagine what this is. So he said, well, I'm putting an envelope, and I'm gonna overnight it to you. He spends like $47 to send me this bill. Y'all, th- I'm telling Jackie, there's a bill coming I think it's gotta be high, I don't know. It's gotta be expensive. They're harassing, they're literally showing up almost uh, camping out outside of our old house. So I, I, I open it up, it's for $23.89. I'm like, this can't be right. So I call and the lady's like, uh, can I get your account number? And I tell her, she's like, oh, I gotta send you to our collections department. I said, this, is, this has gotten really real. This has gotten super real. It had been months, they said, Mr. Rose, we have been trying to get a hold of you for months. And I said, I will, uh, I will, I will pay you $23.89 right now. She said, well, this is a, uh, uh, this call is being uh, recorded for, uh, and I'm saying, you don't even need to record it. I'm going to pay this bill. It is, I would have paid it if I'd have known about it. But here's what I told him. I need you to make a note in your system because I'm not where I used to be. I'm somewhere else. And whenever the enemy tries to get in your head or people or critics try to convince you that you're you where you used to be or who you used to be, you need to, with boldness and authority, say, oh, no, 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 I'm not there anymore. I'm somewhere else. The thing that used to hold me captive, the thing that used to hold me bound, the thing that I used to struggle with, I'm not there anymore. I'm somewhere else. The money I used to mismanage, the issue that used to cause me to live reckless, I'm not where I used to be. Come on, somebody say it out loud. I'm somewhere else. I'm somewhere else. I don't live there anymore. Stop trying to harass me. Just send it to where I am now. Because I'm not where I used to be. The enemy wants to try to hold you captive. He wants to try to tell you that you're going to get stuck right here in the middle. But if you look back and you remind the devil, yeah, 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 but God brought me out of that. And then he showed up and fought for me here. I might be here in the middle, but he provided for me there. I might be here in the middle, but he healed me here. I might be right here in the middle, but he showed up and fought for me here. It causes great faith to rise in you to know where you're going. Because here's the truth. Faith will put you in places later that your mind can't comprehend right now. And when you live by faith, and you walk by faith and not by sight. You can see, everybody close your eyes real quick. You can see where you're going. Come on, see that dream unfolding. See that business coming alive. See that marriage restored. See, see that financial disaster turn around. See you ringing that bell at MD Anderson because you're cancer free. Come on, see, see that diagnosis reversing. See the doctor saying, I don't know what happened, but the ultrasound came back and you no longer have a clogged artery. Come on, see it. See it in faith. We walk by faith, not by sight, but we do have a glimpse in the faith. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 and 19, look at me, but the Lord says, watch this, do not cling to the events of the past or dwell on what happened long ago. Watch for the new thing I'm going to do. And it's already happening. See, you might be in the middle, but God has the incredible ability to say, hey, there's a new thing that's starting and it's already begun. I will make a road through the wilderness and give you streams of water there. The definition of the word cling is to stick to, to hold to tightly. But once you release that and you begin to really get free, you'll start looking at your past with a posture of gratitude, not because of what you went through, but because of all the things God healed and delivered you from. See, I love my story. I tell my story. I brag about my story, not because of what we have done, but because of what God has done. Come on, somebody needs to tell your story. Look at the person next to you and say, you need to tell your story. Come on. Write this down if you're taking down notes. The middle season should also produce growth in your life. The middle season should be a growing season. I'm not where or who I used to be, so because I've gone through it, I've chosen to grow through it. There's a reason that God, again, doesn't give us all the details. Because none of us would be able to really move in the fullness of our destiny if we knew of all the adversity that we would face. Nobody in the room, 
Nobody watching online likes to be uncomfortable. We proved that last week when it was 86 degrees in the room. Y'all were fans. Some of y'all were, if I'd have had a hairpiece on, I'd have taken it off and used it as a fan. <laughs> Nobody wants to be uncomfortable. Our camp this last week, we had air in certain areas of camp, but at the service, it, we were like, God, I thank you for the cool presence of your spirit to breathe in the room. God, show up and breathe. It was hot. Who likes to be uncomfortable? Nobody. And if God said, hey, I've got an incredible plan for your life, but you're going to face adversity. You're going to have some uncomfortable seasons. You're even going to feel stuck in the middle. You'd probably say, God, pick somebody else. The truth is, opposition and some disappointments will cause you to stretch your faith and ultimately grow some spiritual muscles. The Bible says in James chapter one, verse two and three, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Why? For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Come on, look at the person next to you and say, I'm still growing. Come on, I'm still growing. Second Peter chapter three, verse 18 says, let the gift of undeserved grace and the understanding that comes from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, help you keep on growing. Every day, you can grow in the middle, but you have to be very careful to not let negative people, past critics or voices, people that are around you to convince you that they haven't seen you grow, that there's not positivity happening in your life. Because if you're not careful and you let that in, you'll get stuck where you're no longer grateful, and you're no longer growing. So today, I want us to hear this. The season in the middle is a season of growing. Again, not focusing on our past, because you're not going that way anymore. Not worrying about your future, because God's already there. But recognizing that the middle season is a growing season. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 12, when you walk, you won't be held back. I love this. When you run, you won't Stumble. This is why it's so important to guard your gates, your thoughts, your words, what you focus on, because the noise of life can keep you from clarity. We were driving around. Uh, uh, my, my wife and I had to drive up separate from camp because I had to come back early, but we were in her car and we were trying to find a restaurant around Livingston. And my kids were, Fox is three and he just jibber jabbers. He talks the whole time. I'm like, shh. And he's like, no. And I was like, get your kid. And in my sixth show, she says, where are we going to eat? Where are we going? Is it going to have toys? Where are we going? Is it going to have a play area? Where are we going? Where are we going to be doing? What are we doing? And they just were talking. And then my, we had a DVD on and music was on. I think my wife was even whistling. I'm like, there was so much happening. There was so much noise and chaos. I said, everybody be quiet. I can't see. <laughs> have you ever been there before? <laughs> when you're trying to drive and there's so much happening? You cannot, uh, you can't only not hear the, the, the voice of the GPS. I need everybody, shush, I can't see. And my six-year-old's like, what do you mean? You can't see. The truth is, there's things in our life that keep us from being able to hear the voice of God. Maybe you're here and you'd say, Daniel, the truth is, I haven't heard the voice of God in a while. I feel like I'm just kind of surviving life primary way the Spirit of God speaks to us, I need you to hear this, is through the Word of God. That's why we challenge our church to do the first 15. We added the five more minutes, so we say the first 20. Read your Bible every day for five minutes. Pray every day for five minutes. Worship every day for five minutes, and then take a moment and simply remember all that he's brought you out of for five minutes. And then what ends up happening is you get so hungry, 20 minutes isn't enough. 45 minutes to an hour is more realistic, and then you'll actually extend it even more because when you start developing this incredible relationship with God, you'll be hungrier for more of him. The Bible says in John chapter three, verse 30, I need you to become greater and greater as I become less. The more you become less and the more he becomes greater, the more clarity you'll have. But it's difficult when the noise of life is muddying the waters of your ability to hear him. Romans chapter 12, verse two says it this way. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you do that? by getting in the word every day. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Some of my best seasons of clarity and growth in my relationship with God was in the middle. When I had to prioritize time in the word, when I had to prioritize time for clarity and direction, my wife and I never make any major decisions until we pray and fast for at least three days. 
Some of you are like, why? Why do you have to fast? Because it tells our flesh, you're not in charge anymore. And I need to shut out some things in my life. Some of y'all need to get off Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. And I'm not hearing the voice of God. I'm just looking for a sign. Put all that down and open up the Bible and get in the word every day. Fast a little bit. Deny your flesh for a minute and ask God to speak to you. And I'm telling you, it's in the word. He will meet you where you're at. The middle season doesn't have to be a wasted season of your life. Again, some of the most incredible times of sensitivity is found in the presence of God in the middle of the waiting, in the middle of the season. I just chose to worship him. I chose to stay in his presence even in the middle. If you want to grow in faith, if you want to grow and experience the true grace and mercy of God, you're going to find it in the middle. The enemy will try to convince you and discourage you that the middle is where you're always going to be. Watch this. Faith grows in the middle. But faith does not settle in the middle. Faith does not get stuck in the middle. So as you grow, it's like supernatural four-wheel drive. I want you to write this down. Number three, the middle season does not mean God is not working. Somebody needs to hear that today. Because maybe you haven't heard from him in a while. Maybe you have been struggling to read your Bible. Maybe even in worship earlier, you just had... Tough time entering in. The middle season does not mean God is not working, but in our humanity, when something is delayed, we automatically assume it's denied. But it does not mean God is not working. What I have found in the middle season is sometimes God's redirection and sometimes God's silence is actually built in protection. And in that moment, I realize, wait, 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 God, I'm not moving until you say so. And sometimes his redirection And even those silent seasons are for your protection. Know this, God is still working. Because here's the truth. The moment you start, I need somebody to grab this. The moment you start to do God's will, you often trigger spiritual opposition. You ever notice that? You're like, God, I'm gonna step out in faith. It's like, whoa, I just got hit by an arrow. That's why it's important to wear our armor every day. Ephesians chapter six, y'all put on every piece, the feet of peace, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness. You got the shield of faith, the sword of spirit. Come on, you got the helmet of salvation every day because the moment you step out to do God's will, you often trigger spiritual opposition. We preach this all the time. Don't be surprised when you face opposition. You should be more surprised when you don't because that is a season where you're maybe stagnant. But the truth is faith doesn't see problems. Faith sees possibilities. Life can be hard. Life can be tough, but tough times don't last. People of faith do. To really trust God. You can clap. It's okay. I'll take it. That's good. Let's go. It's a good day. To really trust God and to walk in faith. Write this down. Daily surrender is required. It's not on the screen, so I want you to write it down. Daily surrender is required. Daily devotion is required. And daily dedication is Daily dedication is required. Daily surrender, daily devotion, and daily dedication because nothing changes if nothing changes. I'm stuck in this figure eight. I'm stuck in this pattern. Get in the word. I'm not hearing the voice of God. Get in the word. I'm not feeling sensitive to his presence that much. Get in the word. Daily surrender, daily devotion, daily dedication is required. And in that daily relationship, here's what happens. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, I said it earlier, we walk by faith, not by sight, living our lives in a manner constant with our constant belief, consistent with our constant belief in God's promises. Our daily relationship, that surrender, that devotion, that dedication, ultimately builds our faith. Romans chapter 1, verse 17, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith, Disclosed in a way that awakens more faith. That means your faith is growing. Come on, say my faith is growing. As it is written, it forever remains written. The just and upright shall live by faith. Now we're all experiencing a shaking. None of us are exempt from what we're feeling. Inflation, the threat of recession, expenses in life, the housing market, what's going to happen next? If you're on social media, if you're watching the news, you're inundated with constant chaos. There's a constant shaking, but I want to encourage 
all of us as a church family today with this promise. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us then be thankful and worship God with acceptable reverence and awe. Even when our lives are shaken, let us remember, watch this, we are all a part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And any emotion, any idea, any person that tells you otherwise is simply not true. What the job of the enemy is to do is to distract you from the king of kings. The enemy wants to try to distract you from worshiping the living God. So when everything else is shaking, you say, hey, 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 devil, I'm not a part of this worldly system. I may live in it, but I'm not of it because I'm a part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Come on, somebody should give God praise. Because during the shifting, during the shaking and the growing, number four, the middle season is where we meet God in a brand new way. Again, God is not just the God above us, the majestic creator of the universe. He is all those things. But again, he's also a God who dwells among us. After my mom got saved, she found herself alongside my brother, my sister, and, and me right there in the middle. And she stood in faith and she believed for change, but she kept experiencing the reality of heartbreak and pain because of my dad's choices. But audacious faith began to grow inside of her while she was in the middle all of her prayers and everything she had been standing firm in, growing in her faith, she saw a harvest of it when my dad asked Jesus to be his Lord and Savior. Everything changed because she grew her faith in the middle. So my ask today of you is what are you believing for in the middle? What are you asking God to reveal to you in the middle? With every eye closed just for a moment, God, I pray today every daughter, every son, every mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, every son, every single and secure person, everybody watching online across all of our locations, Lord, as they ask themselves that question, what am I believing for in the middle? Hebrews chapter 11, verse one says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. God, today, I pray that you would reveal your spirit to every single person. The sound of my voice, God, today, they find themselves in the middle, God, I pray, Lord, that they wouldn't allow this season to be a wasted season, but they would grow with audacious faith and allow you to stretch their faith in this testing season so that they can step into what you called them to in the next assignment that they're called to. In Jesus' name, you can stand your feet. I love the acronym of this word, faith. <laughs> the acronym of the word faith, fully anticipating it to happen. How many of y'all are fully anticipating a miracle to happen in your life? Come on, how many of y'all are fully anticipating that family dynamic to turn around? Come on, how many of y'all are fully anticipating that addiction to break off of that family member? Come on, how many of y'all are fully anticipating that your scenario and that God is writing victory in your story? Come on, lift your hands towards heaven. God, meet us where we're at. Right now, some of you need to just release some things, surrender some things. Allow God to unlock joy in the season of the middle. Allow God to unlock growth in the middle in the waiting season. Allow God to unlock a brand new, fresh wind behind your relationship with him. God, meet us all where we're at right now. As we lift our hands open-handedly, God, we surrender. And God, I pray right now, God, that you are doing miracles in the middle. You are doing miracles right now in marriages. You're doing miracles, God, in families. You're breaking off generational shackles and issues. You're breaking off depression. You're breaking off anxiety. You're breaking off panic attacks and fear. You're breaking off suicidal thoughts. God, anybody who's been struggling with self-affliction or cutting, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you're healing them now. I pray, God, that you're mending brokenness. God, I thank you, God, that you're healing emotional distress. God, I thank you that you're bringing stability to mental struggles in the name above every name. I thank you for miracles in Jesus name in the middle. Come on. If you believe it, can you give God praise? Because God showed up today. He showed up today in the middle. Come on. Say it out loud. God showed up today in the middle. I feel that somebody give God praise. He showed up today in the middle. If you're here at West Houston watching online, if you're at Cinco Woodlands, and you're here today and you say, Daniel, here's the truth. I don't know Jesus as my savior, but I want to. I want to know him 
as my personal Lord and Savior. If that's you today, I'm gonna give you an opportunity. Again, at Hope City, we don't pray prayers for symbolic reasons. We pray because we believe, according to Romans 10, verse nine and 10, when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. Slate wiped clean, sins thrown as far from the east as the west. Maybe the second invitation, he said, Daniel, here's the truth. I used to walk with the Lord, but I fell away. I got stuck in the middle. I've been living reckless. And I wanna rededicate my life today with every eye closed across all locations. If you're watching online, you can say yes to Jesus. Our team will help you there. Nobody moving just for a moment. If you would just honor this moment, there are people's lives that are about to change for eternity. One, I wanna give my life to Jesus for the very first time. Two, Daniel, today's the day I wanna rededicate my life across all of our locations watching online. Three, you're talking about me. Would you lift up your hand? I'm looking all over the room. Three, today, I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see you. I see you. I see you. Come on, I see you all the way in the back. Let's go. I see you over here, over here, over here. I see you in the back. I see you, my friend. You can put your hands out. Anybody else? I saw you over there. Come on. If you're online, say yes to Jesus. Come on. One more time. You're talking about me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to rededicate my life. Just wave at me real quick. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. Come on, I see you, my friend. Come on, can we give God praise? Today's a good day. All right, so do this with me. I want everybody to pray this prayer with me with boldness. Say it out loud. Jesus, it's me. Forgive me for all my sins. I believe you hung on a cross, shed your blood for my life, even though I didn't deserve it. You did it because you said my life was worth it. You took on all my sin all my shame and I repent for all my issues and I lay them at your feet. From this day on, I choose to live for you. You are my Father. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City. Let's give God an ovation of praise.